In this video, we are going to discuss how to play Kinu, specifically Kinu with the protector trait in the wonderful video game of Temtem, one versus one PvP. Oh yeah! So Kinu has two traits, protector and benefactor. We're not going to discuss benefactor today because it doesn't get played very often, whereas protector Kinu is one of the most common, if not the single most popular Tem in the game. Why is that? It's because it is just like the best support tem in the game by a mile. Cerneef has some good stuff, Grumper can do a little bit, you can use double edge on tems like Momo, or even I think, is it Zizar that can run? It was like all kinds of stuff, but Kinu is the bread and butter, support tem, defensive buff tem, nothing else comes close, and that's because of its trait, Protector. Protector, whenever Kinu swaps in, it buffs plus one defense and plus one special defense to the ally tem. That trait, is insanely strong. It's just so damn strong. Nothing else in the game, at least right now, where this video is coming out about a month before Sapanku, a month before the island of Sapanku comes out, nothing else in the game even comes close to that. It is just insane. So let me run through Kinu's base stats, and then we'll get into the strategy. The base stats of Kinu, assuming you have perfect SVs with no TVs, Kinu has 162 HP, 69 stamina, 111 speed, 91 physical attack, 78 physical defense, 107 special attack, and 126 special defense. Good special defense, bad physical defense, right? So right away when you're doing TVs on Kinu, you might want to consider adding some physical defense TVs just to buff up the physical defense. That is Kinu's defensive weakness. Uh, special attack is actually pretty good on Kinu, even though that's not really why you're going to use it. 107 is decent. So your goal with Kinu is simple. In general, this is going to be generalized. Each team, there's teams with different situations, right? But these videos, I'm trying to give an overview of the most common usage of the Tem for beginners who are building their first couple teams. Um, or amateurs and higher level players who want to review the basics. Because you, you can never know the basics too well. The better you are at the basics, the better you are at the game. High level stuff changes, basics don't change so much. That's why we're doing it that way. So what's the goal with Kinu? Get as many protector buffs as possible. In other words, as many defensive buffs as possible. Boost the defense, boost the special defense, swap Kinu out and then swap it back in as many times as you can without playing badly in the process. Uh, and then on top of that, you want to try to time the sacrifice, which is one of Kinu's moves, at the right time so Kinu is low enough health that you're not wasting value, but getting it in before the opponent can kill the Kinu, so not getting outspeeded on the turn. As many protector buffs as possible, and then get the sacrifice. That is Kinu's main usage on the team. That is the main win condition as far as Kinu is concerned on most of the teams that it plays with. There are some other things, and we're going to go over those things. There's two ways you can build Kinu. It is fast Kinu, fast control Kinu that uses Hypnotize to put things to sleep and outspeeds other Thames, or tanky Kinu, which has higher defense investment and perhaps some special defense, and is relying more on just getting all the protector buffs and then being able to use sacrifice at the end, as well as stonewall buffs. So slow and tanky is more buff oriented, even more buff oriented, because both both builds want to do buffs. The fast build, which is going to be a little more fragile, a little more vulnerable to attacks, that build is going to be more controlling on the opponent's side, denying their ability to act by putting their Thames to sleep with Hypnosis, or even with the move Lullaby, although Hypnosis is going to be more common, unless you're running Deceit Aura, and then it gets complicated. So, one other move that we should mention, uh, or one other build aspect is Turbo Choreography. Kinu does have utility in Turbo Choreography teams, because it has the move Turbo Choreography, so you can combo it with Barnshi, with Grandpa, with Vola, with a handful of attempts, give them boosted speed, and turn them into unstoppable raid bosses. If you haven't won a game using a plus two or even a plus four speed Grandpa, uh, you're just missing out on one of the more fun ways to play PvP. Uh, that Turbo Choreography is like its own world that we will discuss in future videos. I'm actually gonna be playing Turbo Choreography on stream in a few weeks, so I'm excited to test that archetype personally so I can give better advice on it, but. In general, I would say when two mid-range teams or slow teams meet up against each other, the one that gets more Kinu value is the one that wins a lot of the time, depending on a few other factors. Um, so specifically talking about the moves, your fast and sleepy Kinu build is going to be Beta Burst, Revitalize, uh, Hypnosis, and Sacrifice. Your slow and tanky build is quite similar, but not quite the same. It's going to be Beta Burst, Revitalize, Stonewall, sacrifice 
There are other ways to, you know, you can mix and match different moves. Again, Turbo Choreography is available. You could also not run Sacrifice. You don't have to run Sacrifice, although I always do pretty much. But basically, that's it. So for, for a newer player who's getting started, you're always going to run Beta Burst, Revitalize, and Sacrifice. And the only question is, do you run Hypnosis with a faster Kinu TV spread, or do you run Stonewall with a slower Kinu spread? Again, leaving out Turbo Choreography. What are some things that counter Kinu? You got to watch out for two things. There are two moves that will be the majority of the time. These are what's going to try to kill Kinu. Two moves. Either Quetzalenyo or Toxic Ink. Those are both times two damage, and they're both on strong Thames. Strong Toxic moves, mostly Toxic Ink, also Noxious Bomb. And then Quetzalenyo on Raikin, Kapir, uh, Fire Koish, and, and even some others beyond that. Quetzal and Yotoxin. In general, when Kinu is up against poison or up against fire, swap it out. Another thing that they can use to chip away at your Kinu, your opponents can chip away, is if they use strong damage attacks that are at least neutral and have stab. So a Turok using Feather Gatling, a Volarin using Feather Gatling. That's going to at least three hit KO your Kinu probably if it's on a strong enough temp. Uh, what would be some other examples of that? It's not going to be, you know, it, I mean, Lightning is going to be neutral. So a Grumper with Thunder Strike is going to do it. For example, neutral type attacks. But you also resist stuff. You're going to resist the melee. You're going to resist the water. Also resisting earth. Those are three big resists for Kinu. So you have some good things you defend against or weak against some stuff. And again, just keeping on the main thing here. What is your goal with this Tem? And your goal with Kinu, get as many protector buffs as possible. Swap out. Swap in. Swap out. Swap in. Keep doing that shit. Sacrifice eventually. Stonewall if you're lucky enough to get the chance. The more buffs you get, the better. And use Revitalize sparingly. Revitalize, I see a lot of lower TMR players using Revitalize in weird spots. Revitalize is a good move, but on Kinu, it's not as often the best move compared to stuff like, honestly, Cerneef. Cerneef is going to use Revitalize a lot more than Kinu because Kinu has Stonewall, and Kinu can swap out and swap back in, both of which tend to be better than Revitalize in a lot of spots. Revitalize is good on a Tem that's already buffed. When you have a Calibus that's plus three defense, plus three special defense and you know it's at 120 health against a fucking platymus and uh pocus like that's when you want to use revitalize like when you have a you know a tem at mid damage mid health already buffed and you can heal it up don't use revitalize on turn two right after your you know mouth flank gets hit down to 100 health like you're just, they're gonna they're gonna use quetzal at three priority again kill the mouth flank your kinu's not gonna get the revitalize like don't don't play revitalize games all day Focus on getting those buffs. Buffs, buffs, buffs. Focus less on the healing and more on the buffing. And remember to decide ahead of time. Are you fast and sleepy or are you slow and buffy? That's that's pretty much it. My, my final thought here is to put Kinu on every team that you build as a new player. If you are new to this game and you're playing PvP, put Kinu on every single team. Once you get a little more experience, the main exceptions, the ones you're going to take Kinu off of, are hyper-aggressive teams. But in general... Kinu should go on pretty much every team, and you should utilize it heavily. You want to, like, put Kinu on almost every team, and then you want to pick Kinu in the first two draft picks before the opponent's second ban. You want to do that pretty much every time. So it's like you really want to use Kinu. Use Kinu. It's one of the strongest Thames in the game. And most likely, even after Saponku, yes, Kinu gains weaknesses because mental is weak to digital. Um, but Kinu's not going anywhere. Kinu is going to be extremely strong. So Kinu, a Tem you really should play. Don't try to avoid it. Don't try to be like, I'm off meta. I'm not using Kinu because Kinu's on all the teams. I'm going to avoid the meta. No, use Kinu. You need Kinu. Kinu is a cornerstone of almost every team. It is the best defensive buff tem in the game. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this how to play protect Kinu video. Uh, shout outs again to Yumi for editing it. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet because that helps us build up this channel so I can start doing cooler stuff like more ambitious videos. All that good stuff would be cool, so make sure you click that like, click that subscribe, leave a comment. No, Flux! Don't say it! Don't tell me to like and subscribe! It's so annoying, I unfollowed. I don't care. Don't do it. Forget it. Don't even do it. Alright, I'm out of here. Peace!